The term mass monster gets tossed around so loosely nowadays. But I mean, it is easy to call every bodybuilder in the IFBB a mass monster when they're all pushing 300 pounds in the offseason. And who do you call a mass monster? Is Nick, Nick Walker a mass monster? Most of you would say, of course he is. He's the biggest dude out there. But I mean, Brandon Curry, could you call him a mass monster? No, he's an aesthetic bodybuilder. So what are they doing the same size? And that's really my point. Today's day and age, the term mass monster, it is so diluted because they are all mass monsters. Today, we are going to rewind it back into the history of bodybuilding and take a look at some mass monsters for their time. And this dude here is George Eiferman. And he competed back in the 1940s, guys. 1940s. He was the most massive guy out there. Look at him out angling, out sizing Steve Reeves. And Steve Reeves was a big dude all the way, big dude. Here's a very rare, I would call an off season picture perhaps of George Eiferman. Look at how big he is, thick he is compared to Steve Reeves, who was really maybe not considered a mass monster. I mean, to some people, of course. Take a look, guys. George Eiferman. Imagine seeing this on the uh, on the beach back in the 1940s. You'd probably call the, uh, the police or the bobbies or whatever they were called back then. Take a look at this dude. This is Leroy Colbert. And he competed back in the early 1950s. A very short career, but for his time, he was probably one of the most massive guys out there. So I figured I would make mention of him since we are going back into the history of mass monsters and just giant bodybuilders. And Bill Pearl definitely resembles that remark. He was a big dude way up into the 1970s, but he competed back in the 50s and he had the same... You know, same stature, same size. The guy was massive. So Bill Pearl, in a lot of people's eyes, was really the first true mass monster, freak-type bodybuilder. Here's Freddie Ortiz. And this just goes to show you, you don't have to be 300 pounds to be a mass monster freak. Look at this little creature. He was just a lightweight bodybuilder, but look at those arms. He was probably more muscular and more thickly developed than a lot of the bodybuilders. Food for thought, he was one of the first bodybuilders that experimented with, you know, extracurricular vitamins, things of that nature. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger, was he a mass monster? A lot of people would say no. A lot of people would say no. But for 1974, he was huge. He was making Lou Ferrigno look small. And Lou Ferrigno was anything but small. And of course, Arnold's buddy, Franco Colombo, I guess could get a mention here. He was pretty massive, but a mass monster? Mmm, I don't know. Now, Sergio Oliva. This guy was around before Arnold and Franco. Well, at least he was the Olympia champion before them guys. And he was a true mass monster freak bodybuilder. The most muscular man in the world by far, I would say. In the late 60s, even in the, uh, you know, 70s, throughout the 70s, this picture here. I remember when I was just a wee grasshopper, a wee whippersnapper. I had a, I believe it was a Nautilus training book. And these pictures, oh, I would stare at them and just imagine having arms that big. And speaking of Lou... I don't really think he is a mass monster. Back in the 70s, he was fairly lean compared to Arnold and Sergio. And he made his comeback, of course, in the 90s. And he was massive. But there was, uh, you know, mass monsters by that time. Mike Menzer could also be considered big mass monster. But realistically, not in my mind. Now, Tom Platts, as far as the wheels are concerned, you could take his wheels... Put them on the uh, the upper body or use the upper body of Sergio Oliva. And that would be the biggest mass monster freak of all time. So upper body, no for Tom Platts. Lower body, maybe the biggest freak of all time. Now, at the other end of the spectrum was Brutal Bertle Fox. He didn't have the biggest in the, the wheel department. But look at his upper body, pecs, delts, 
Oh my goodness, look at his traps. He looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And food for thought, Brutal Fox, incredible bodybuilder, terrible human being. Here is Victor Richards, a true mass monster, but vexingly, he did not compete when he was massive. He did compete back in the day, and he was truly the biggest guy out there. I mean, look at how he would dwarf his opponents here. That's unbelievable. Dorian Yates, 1993, cannot be denied. He definitely deserves to be on this video. The first bodybuilder to reach, you know, 250s, 260s on stage. I'm sure, he was very close to 300 pounds off season. But that's the thing. Dorian didn't get too, you know, out of shape off season. This was, you know, six weeks away, I think, from the Olympia. And of course, the Mass Monster era ushered in other giants as well. This video would not be complete without mentioning Craig Kovacs. Six feet four, probably 400 pounds off season. He'd be well over 300 pounds competitive. Anyway, may he rest in peace. Maybe the biggest bodybuilder of all time. Paul Dillette. Look at this freak of nature. He was a giant. He was a true giant. It seemed in the 90s they kept getting bigger and bigger, and he had some freakish body parts. He would literally dwarf even Dorian Yates, who had ushered in the, you know, the mass monster era just a couple of years prior. And I think, in my mind, in the 1990s, it was almost as if the, the mass monsters had plateaued with this dude here. Look at Nasser Elson body. Have you ever once in your entire life set eyes on a larger freak of nature no i'm not saying he's natural anyway anyway now that would be impossible this guy was a colossus when you say mass monster who comes to my mind nasser elson body what a freak what a freak he was one of the few guys to be able to make dorian yates look small Imagine that. Imagine that. Oh, yeah, I can make Dorian Yates look small. And another guy we could make mention here who made Ronnie Coleman and Chris Cormier look small. This is Jean-Pierre Fuchs, Jean-Bidon Pierre. And I don't know if he was any bigger, freakier than uh, Nasser Elson body, but he was a giant. Hey, that's not his back. I actually displayed this as Jean-Pierre Jean Fuchs's back. It's actually Dave Palumbo's back, so I apologize to anybody that was misinformed. Actually, a couple of sites credit that back to Jean-Pierre, but it is uh, Dave Palumbo. And since we just mentioned Ronnie Coleman being outsized by Jean-Pierre Fuchs, make no mistake about it, that was in 1997. This is in 2003, and he would have been doing the out-angling if he brought this near 300-pound version of himself back to the 97, Mr. Olympia, I'm here to tell you. And he maintained that size. I mean, this is him in, what, 2005 against Jay Cutler, who was, let's face it, a big dude himself, but being totally outsized by the king. Here is Marcus Rule, and few gentlemen, after, you know, the Ronnie Coleman era, the Marcus Rule era, can really be considered mass monsters. I mean, stand next to this guy. There was nobody larger, nobody freakier, und das Freak, the big German giant. And really, that's, like I said, that was really your plateau with mass monsters. I mean, you had Art Atwood, who was arguably just as big as Marcus Rule. Maybe not in some shots, but look at his big, thick chest. That was Arnold Schwarzenegger if he competed in modern times. And another thing about Art, look at his back. Have you ever seen a larger, freakier, more mass monster-like back than this? Imagine if he dried out a little bit more. This would have been the biggest, most dominant back of all time. And like I said, the mass really plateaued back then. I mean, you had some bodybuilders of note, like Phil Heath, who was gigantic. But even Jay Cutler was outsizing him. But here in 2017, he was pretty darn massive. And other freaks of note include uh, this guy, Branch Warren. 
Now, is he a true mass monster? In the wheel department, absolutely, much like a Tom Platz, and totally freaky, shredded, and peeled in the upper body. And then, of course, if I did not include this guy, Boobunder the Beast, Rolly Winkler, then you guys, uh, I'm sure you guys would be upset. But realistically, guys, was he any bigger and more massive than, say, Phil Heath in 2017? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not when you look at the entire body, the legs, things of that nature. But truly, when you look at this guy's delts, maybe nobody in the history, aside from perhaps Marcus Rule, was bigger in that area. I mean, look at the size of those shoulders. And then that leads me to this guy. Big Rammy, mom tells by a, he is the largest guy on today's stage. But is he any freakier and larger than, say, Nasser al Sanbadi or even uh, Marcus Rule, for goodness sakes? Mm, probably not, considering here in 2015, is this 2015, if I'm not mistaken, was maybe Big Rammy at his largest, at least in terms of his Olympia showings. So if I do believe the mass monsters did plateau, who do I think is the one true mass monster? Might surprise some of you, but I think it should be Dorian Yates. Dorian Yates, without him, hey, you don't know the way bodybuilding would have went. It could have went the way of Lee Labrada, Sean Ray. But Dorian Yates, he came in so big, so shredded, so peeled, that he took the title and, with one foul swoop, changed bodybuilding so there's your nasser Elson bodies your marcus rules but i think dory yates is the true mass monster of bodybuilding hit thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel but not before you let me know of some mass monsters mass monsters that i may have forgot about in the comment section below have a great day